Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about Ceph and RBD, which is something where you can create images in your Ceph cluster and run them on a specific client. Ta -da! So, first off today I might be uh, taking some breaks and coughing and so on because I have a little bit of a cold and also a lot of it, uh, of it has gone down in my throat, so some green tea and some um, honey will make that much smoother. And for God's sake, take care of yourself during this winter season where you can get flu and so on, so you don't get um, sick. So this video is going to be a little bit shorter because this topic uh, doesn't really have that much in it. and. I tried to add other things to it and didn't succeed, but I will come to that later on. So first off, we have our cluster. If I switch over here, I have uh, we have our cluster here. We have some pools, and in this case, we only have the de uh, device health metrics. So what we want to now is create a pool that we can save our data into uh, for these RDB. So let's switch over to the client here. And what we want to do is just create a simple pool. I will call it an RBD pool. In the documentation, they actually had the example of swimming pool, which I thought was a little bit funny. Uh, but creating an RBD pool here will just create an, a simple pool in our cluster without any real applications to it. It will get 32 pages or uh, placement groups, and now it's clean and up and running. In order to use this for RBD, we need to initialize it. We have a command called RBD, then pool, init, and our name of the pool. And when we have run this, if we switch over to our Ceph cluster again, we see here that this has the application of RBD. And next up, we want to create the specific disk that we want to work with. And there is a bunch of different ways to do this, uh, but this is the command and all the things that you can add to this command. So first off, you have rbd, create, in this case we call it disk1. We want a size of it. I say that I want four gigabytes in this case, because megabytes is the default uh, thing here. You can say 4G if you want and so on. Image feature should be layering on, in this specific case. There is a bunch of different features that you can use. And then we have which monitor it should be connected to. This is not really required in this case, but if you don't have a configuration file on your machine which monitors are available, then you can't use that. And you can supply the key file, but if you have a key file in the normal places, that should not be an issue either. And then you say what pool to use, in this case, the RBD pool. Now I have created this disk. So if I switch over to my screen again here and look at the block devices images, we have one disk here, it's four gigabytes in size. Uh, we don't have any mem uh, namespaces or trash. You can actually trash an image and then restore it from trash if you want. So you have some kind of a recycle bin in this concept as well. Uh, another thing that you can do with your images is actually mirror them over to another cluster if you want. So you can take one image or multiple images and say these images should be mirrored to my backup image uh, cluster every X days or something like that. So you can add those kind of features. One thing that I wanted to look into was this iSCSI. So this is something that you can set up. So you have a gateway and an API that it's uh, iSCSI that will talk to this specific um, drive and so on. You need to set up a bunch of different, uh, two different services on each of your cluster members. So you need at least two to four of these gateways and uh, API services. I set that up and there is a good guide on how to do that. It took a little bit of a time and so on, and I learned a lot about that, but I didn't finalize that because I wanted it to connect to a Windows machine, because that's 
a typical use case, I would think. And I didn't get it to work on my Windows 11 machine. I put that into a virtual machine and tried to actually connect it up. But that feature of iSCSI seems to have been removed in Windows 10. So it has been deprecated in Windows versions. Every uh, driver that you can find out there has been removed from Microsoft's site. So I don't really know what's going on there. Why can't I use iSCSI on Windows machines anymore? Is that not something that you want to do? Or is it that they have replaced it with something else? So I skipped this feature. Now, if you want to see a tutorial where I go through iSCSI and set up all of these uh, things, I will create one of those as well. But I thought it was not really relevant as it's deprecated in some of the operating systems. Uh, next up, we want to map this disk to our client. So we go in here and say we want to show, run rbd map disk one and use the name. So this is the client name that we want to use. I use the admin uh, username. And then you can have the monitor again. I don't need that. Then you have the key file and last but not least the pool. When you have mapped this, you get a device on your machine that you can mount. In this case, it's called slash dev slash rbd zero but it will also have another name. It will have the name of dev, rdb, rdb pool, which is my pool name, and then the name of the disk. So you can say, I want to create an ext4 uh, on this specific disk over here. Uh, so now I create a file system on my Ceph cluster on this specific device. And you might think, why would I want to have a file system when I can have just an image and connect that all over the place? The reason you want the file system is the shareability. So if you have a file system, you can share that file system among a lot of different servers or a lot of different clients and have the same data and, man and manipulate the same data at the same time. The block images are usually used for one server and one use case. So you get more data, you get redundancy, you can have mirroring of these different images, but you can't use it on multiple machines. If you try that, then they say that could really uh, create issues for you. So that's not a supported use case. Now that we have created this disk and uh, it's an ext4 we can just mount it as any other disk on our device and if we go into the mnt uh, ceph block device here we see that we don't have any data we have just lost and find i can um, push some data over there so um, mtf uh, ceph device let's uh, copy some data over there and we can copy this and Java Rados over the, there as well. So now I should have some data in this directory. If I then unmount it, uh, just to show you that it is really a device, because I'm not the root. So now I've unmounted it. And if we look at this device, we see that we have no data there. It's an empty uh, directory. But if we go back again and run our um, mount command, we have some data in this directory again. So this is a file system in our Ceph cluster with the specific data that we have stored here. So this is a way that you can expand your storage and get better redundancy on specific data directories that you really need to have um, secured in your environment. Another thing that you can do is to use the feature of RBD map. That's a service that is installed with your Ceph installation. And if we go to our ETC Ceph and look here, you see that you have this file RBD map and that's put there when you install the Ceph binaries. And I have seen it and I have been thinking, what is that all about? Uh, it, you never use it for anything, but now that you have an RBD, you can actually use this RBD map. 
And I have an example here for this disk that we installed. So you can say that the RBD pool of disk one, and uh, we can actually edit it so it's uh, more uh, in, uh, set here. So you see the RBD pool, disk one here, and then I will say which uh, specific account I want to use, in this case admin, and then where the key ring is um, positioned. And if I have this and start the RBD map um, service, so if we look at sys system ctl uh, status rbd map service you see that this is loaded and active in my system so if i had that and then uh, ran this service it will map the device when i start my machine if i then go into my fs tab and add this line where i say dev rbd rbd pool disk one should be mounted to this specific mount point, it's an ext4, and I want to say no auto, because the RBD service will actually mount it for you, but if you have auto on for this device, it might be m trying to mount it before the device is actually mapped to your system, which will not work. So in this case, you have something that will become an extra storage drive that is available for your system at all times. So that's an implementation detail that you can use. I can see that you can have servers that can use this specific feature and then have a heartbeat that actually switches between different servers, uh, servers to handle the data. So you can have an RBD image in the cloud for this specific data and then just switch over which server will use that data in a production environment. So that's one use case you can have for this, but I think you can find multiple other use cases for this specific RBD uh, uh, service and RBD mapping. And this was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found it interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you have any comments or suggestions, then leave them down in the comment section down below. And I really hope to see you in the next video.